What's going on, fellas? This video is for Juan. He's got a big problem on his hands, and the main strategy I'm working with in this video is an attempt to build an ozone generator as fast as possible that can handle 50 psi of pressure and not leak. But we've got to be able to put these things together quick because he needs a lot of them. I'm talking a couple hundred. So that's what's going on here in this video. It's not all about just putting one together. How can I show Juan how he can build these things himself as fast as possible or have me build a bunch of them for him? One or the other. This is a first attempt at a manufacturing strategy that enables us to mass produce these things. Like I said, it's not about just putting it together. It's about getting them off the shelf as fast as possible with yet still very effective equipment. If this was leaking, the air bubbles would be the size of quarters. Okay, you want to be over 30 liters per minute of input just to help cool this thing off. We're putting off copious amounts of ozone, and I've noticed that this foam up that you see is indicative of ozone production. It seems to be doing something to the dye itself, causing it to froth. We're already getting some color change there. Um, it's very endothermic in nature. This jar is getting cold, and look at this vapor coming off of here. There's a mysterious vapor that I have not yet pinned down. I don't know what's going on there. Mescal, you got any ideas what I'm looking at? I just want to also point out that this stuff here is just for testing. This gauge and this brass valve and stuff, this can be taken off. And um, this would basically be probably the size you'd want to use as your intake. I wouldn't take off um, the other side. This is the best for the intake for sure. So just want to point that out. We want to be over 30 liters per minute at all times so this thing starts to heat up just a little bit and that's not a good thing. I also want to point out fellows that if I had an air stone or if I had a magnetic stirring device I could increase the residence time of the bubbles. They're basically just flying right out of there right now. There's hardly any contact with the gas really. Also, Juan, I need to point out that if the air is not 100% dry in this thing, um, you would have to run it vertical with the discharge on the bottom so that any moisture that might accumulate will drain out of this thing. I'm testing it in this direction. It will definitely cool itself a little better being horizontal like this because of the way heat stratifies. If you don't have 100% dry air, you will have to have the discharge on the bottom and this will have to be mounted vertical. So I stopped the test after three hours for two reasons. Uh, the first being I knocked the jar over on accident. I'm not sure what, I think all that scum is probably just something that was in the jar. There's definitely some endothermic activity going on here. I don't know if it's just aspirating air through water is um, causing a cooling effect or what, but that's a drastic change in color, and there was a lot of dye in this water. I spilled half of it when I tripped over the hose, so I dumped the rest in this small jar. Like when the jar had tipped, there was still some remaining in it. Okay, so here is the first unit, Juan. I wanted to test a different electrode configuration just in case we get down the road and we start breaking quartz tube. Just because something runs for a week doesn't mean it'll run for a year, you know what I mean? So I, I built two different electrode styles. This is definitely the lower power version that would work with that lower voltage transformer that they sent us. Um, the other electrode is just too large of a gap. So this is putting off copious amounts of ozone like this thing really stinks the place up even when it's outside so this is a 1000 watt power supply so as I said it can run 10 of these electrodes but one thing I wanted to mention to you about these setups is you cannot run really long high voltage lines it's just not a good idea you want this transformer to be as close to the high voltage electrode as possible, which is gonna be this side here in this particular case. It really doesn't matter which side is which, but it's best if you have this side grounded. 
and that's with this cable here which just kind of connects into this little hole in the side this mounting hole and um, you would want to mount this to a, a very large piece of dielectric plastic or on some other type of isolation scheme so that it's isolated from the rest of the electronics here's the other rapid fab design hopefully it'll allow us to assemble these things as quick as possible has a water jacket there and then water will also pass through this electrode as well now I've got stainless steel parts coming for all of this I just the night I put this together for a test rig I did not have the stainless steel parts on hand but I did have this other stuff so this will be stainless steel and this will all be one sa the same size and what we're going to do is I have some ozone resistant plastic that's going to be a two and a half inch union here and then we're going to have end caps with stainless steel compression fittings that receive the inner electrode and that will be our electric isolation from the exterior electrode which is the cooling jacket here so these things can be put together pretty fast especially once you get a few of them down um, the first one I made took a little bit longer than I would want but I know how it goes when you're building stuff after you build three or four of them you really start to shave time off and I think that something like this is going to be one of the cheapest and fastest builds to get this thing off the ground right away anything outside of going and hiring a manufacturing company to make us some special ceramic end caps and all this stuff that can be done but it takes a long time you'd be looking at you know you'd be a, a year out at that point possibly with all the craziness going on right now what makes this different than from most systems is that typically only one side of the electrode is actively involved in ozone production however with this dual gap strategy this in, there will be an interior corona and an exterior annular corona so we're going to have two coronas taking place and that is why there'll be vent holes in the quartz tubing shroud or the quartz tubing bracket so to say